In this session, you will learn about investment funds, administration of funds, basics of fund accounting, computation of NAV or net asset value, unclaimed dividend and redemption amount, what are they, how they work, pricing and updation, procedure for launching a scheme and compliance requirements, the different types of mutual funds, forward pricing and risk management. Now, let us understand what are investment funds. So what is an investment fund? An investment fund is a supply of capital belonging to numerous investors. This is used to collectively purchase securities while each investor retains ownership and control on his shares. Uh, an investment fund provides a broader selection of investment opportunities, greater management expertise and lower investment fees than investors might be able to obtain on their own. So basically, your fund is nothing but a bucket where lot of investors pool in money and a fund manager manages that professionally. Let us look at the type of investment funds. The different types of investment funds include mutual funds, exchange traded funds, money market funds which is actually a type of mutual funds and the hedge funds. Next, let us break down investment fund. With investment funds, individual investors do not make decisions about a funds, how a fund's assets should be invested. They simply choose a fund based on its goals, risk, fees and other factors. A fund manager oversees these funds and decides which securities it should hold and which securities it should sell and in what quantities and when the securities should be bought and sold. So in short, the fund manager is the one who is deciding where to invest. As an investor, what you are doing is just investing your money. You don't make the decision where the money is going to be invested. That decision is being made by the fund manager. Next, an investment fund can be a broad based fund such as an indexed fund that tracks the S&P 500 or the Nifty 50 or the Sensex. It can be a tightly focused fund such as an ETF that invests only in small technology stocks or some IT focused mutual funds or some infra focused mutual funds. Investment funds have been around for many years, but the Massachusetts Investors Trust Fund is the first open ended mutual fund in the industry. The funds investing in a mix of large cap stocks was launched in 1924. Next, we have open-ended funds and closed-ended funds. Let us understand what is the difference between an open-ended fund and a closed-ended fund. The majority of investment fund assets belong to open-ended mutual funds. These funds issue new shares as investors add money to the pool and retire shares as investors redeem them. These funds are typically priced just once at the end of the trading day. On the other hand, closed-ended funds trade more similarly to stocks than open-ended funds. Closed-ended funds are managed investment funds that issue a fixed number of shares or units and trade on an exchange. While the NAV for the fund is calculated. The fund trades based on the investor supply and demand. So the NAV could be different from the fair market value or the market price of these closed ended funds. Therefore, a closed ended fund may trade at a premium or discount to its NAV. So basically, in an open-ended mutual fund, an investor can keep investing newer and newer amount of money because every time you invest new amount of money, a new unit can be created. So n x number of investments can be made. There is no limit on the total investments. On the other hand, closed-ended investments, they have a fixed size. During the period when the offer is open, 
lot of people investors they purchase units and once that is done the units are not going to change if as an investor i want to exit it the only way is sell it in the secondary market i cannot redeem it the funds the amc is not going to pay me when i redeem it because i cannot redeem it the only thing that i can do is sell it in the open market moving on let us look at the emergence of etfs exchange traded funds emerged as an alternative to mutual funds for traders who wanted more flexibility with their investment funds similar to closed ended mutual funds etfs or exchange traded funds trade on exchanges and are priced and are available for trading throughout the business day many mutual funds such as vanguard 500 index funds have etf counterparts The Vanguard S&P 500 ETF is the same fund but can be bought and sold intraday. ETFs frequently have the advantage of slightly lower expense ratios than their mutual fund equivalent. The first ETF, the SPDR 500 S&P 500 ETF debuted in 1993. ETFs have more than dollar 3 trillion in assets under management as of 31st march 2016 next let us discuss fund administration fund administration is a set of activities that are carried out in support of the process of running a collective investment scheme the scheme may be a traditional mutual fund a hedge fund a pension fund or a unit trust or maybe something in between so a scheme can be different types of funds next managers of funds often choose to outsource some or all of these activities to external specialist companies such as a custodian bank these companies are known as fund administrators their administrative activities may include fund accounting functions and lot of different functions which may depend on whether the fund operations are in the us or whether the fund is an sec registered fund or maybe a fund registered somewhere else but there are lot of fund administration activities that are done by these fund administrators the administrative functions of fund administrators include calculation of the net asset value including the calculation of the funds income and expense accruals and the pricing of securities at current market value preparation of semi annual and annual reports to shareholders maintenance and filing of funds financial books and records as the fund accountant including reconcilement of holdings with custody and broker records payment of fund expenses settlement of daily purchases and sales of securities ensuring collection of dividends and interests calculation and payment to the transfer agent of dividends and distributions if required preparation and filing of the funds prospectus and other sec filings and reports calculation of the total returns and other performance measures of the fund monitoring investment compliance with sec prospectus or us internal revenue code restrictions supervision of the orderly liquidation and dissolution of the fund if required understand that the list is not exhaustive particularly where a fund manager has chosen to outsource some of these tasks to an external company some or all of the administrative activities of the fund may or may not be described as fund administration next where does the fund administrator fit in in the front office a fund manager makes investment decisions in the middle office a broker handles trade clearing and settlement and in the back office the fund administrator takes part in nav calculation and other fund administration activities fund administrators are third party companies that provide support services to funds 
Some of the examples of companies who act as fund administrators are shown on the screen such as JP Morgan, Citibank, HDFC Bank, Morgan Stanley and several others. However, also understand that these are also fund management companies. So they have multiple lines of businesses. These are bulge bracket financial services firm. They have mutual fund business. They have investment banking business. At the same time, they act as fund administrators for different kinds of funds. Earlier, a fund administrator's tasks involved just fund accounting and transfer agency. Due to growing regulatory requirements, the growth of alternative asset classes as well as increased sophistication of both markets and investors, fund administration is now required to be multi-competent. As a result, fund administrators today assume a much broader role by supporting multiple functions within the risk, portfolio management and compliance functions. Why is it that the administrator's role is being extended beyond this his traditional expertise? Fund administration's core business is accounting. Since fund administration systems go through extensive checking during the NAV calculation process, these platforms have particularly valuable information for use by other systems in the production chain, including risk management, performance measurement, compliance, reporting and others. As a result, fund managers depend on their administrator for collecting diverse data needed to carry out various tasks. It only gets better when their administrator undertakes some of them in addition to his core tasks. They, are, they, they still need the data in a trouble-free and secure process to complete a number of processes on their own by filtering and feeding the relevant data to other more specialized systems and processes. Let's begin with risk management and performance measurement. A dedicated portfolio management system is fed directly with data independently of fund administration. Although this would be good practice and would allow for a more thorough reconciliation, only few fund management companies can afford to use it. Both these areas are beyond the scope of administration, but it is particularly useful if the fund administration system understands risk and performance as this will allow it to feed other systems in an accurate, timely and complete manner. Continuing a step further, the fund accounting system should be able to offer directly risk and performance functionality to be used by the fund managers or other outsourcing parties specialized person. This would avoid need to exchange and reconcile data and also help avoid the complexity and expense of purchasing and maintaining separate systems for all these data. Investment compliance is another aspect at the center of attention of regulators and investors alike. At any point in time, the fund manager needs to observe the fund's exposure against all sorts of criteria that have been identified in its investment prospectus. Quite often, additional internal limits may be put in place, which is a best practice. Such limits might apply to a vast universe of parameters, including asset allocation based on region, currency, instrument type, issuer, exposure based on VAR or value at risk, sensitivity to a number of risk factors or other measures. Although the ultimate responsibility for respecting such limit lays with the fund management company, a fund administrator is typically also in charge of verifying such compliance. Therefore, the capacity of his system to monitor any limit structure in a timely and accurate manner is of utmost importance. Regulatory reporting has become more demanding and more complex. As a result, usually other more specialized systems undertake the responsibility to produce regulatory reports. 
In the EU, these includes USITS risk reporting. USITS is a mutual fund based in the European Union. USITS stands for Undertaking for Collective Investment in Transferable Securities. And USIT funds can be sold to any investor within the European Union under a harmonized regulatory regime. Alternative Investment Fund Managers Directive or AIFMD Reporting, Solvency, Transaction Reporting under EMIR, the European Market Infrastructure Regulation. EMIR is a body of European legislation for the regulation of over-the-counter derivatives. Then we have MIFID, which is Market in Financial Instruments Directive. MIFID is the framework of European Union legislation for investment intermediaries that provide financial services or services to clients around shares, bonds, units in collective investment schemes and derivatives. Finally, you, you may also have various other regional directives. Nevertheless, the most natural place to produce such report should be the fund administration system itself, given that all relevant information resides there. Unfortunately, it usually takes too long until fund administration systems can cope up with such requirements, which are often wrongfully considered out of their scope. Gone are the times of paper-based subscription and redemption forms or investor documents and questionnaires. In the modern era, such error-prone and time-consuming transactions must be electronic, subject to automated and robust workflows and audited procedures for each communication layer between the administrator, investment manager and the investors. In addition, a number of portfolio statements and monitoring reports need to be produced on demand by both investors and managers. Relevant to executed transactions, valuation, performance and risk analysis, fees and others. Therefore, the fund administration system needs to be in a position to deliver these in a custom and fully secure manner. Next, let's discuss accounting. Accounting is the analysis and interpretation of bookkeeping records. Accounting is one of the key functions for almost any businesses. It may be handled by a bookkeeping person, an accountant at a small firm or by sizable finance departments with dozens of employees at large corporations. Accounting includes not only the maintenance of accounting records but also preparation of financial and economic information which involves the measurement of transaction and other events related to the entry. While basic accounting functions can be handled by a bookkeeping person or a bookkeeper, advanced accounting is typically handled by qualified accountants who possess designations such as Chartered Certified Public Accountant CPA in United States or a Chartered Accountant in India. On the other hand, bookkeeping is more of a manual process of keeping a record of all transactions pertaining to a business. It ensures that records of the individual financial transactions are correct, up-to-date and comprehensive by maintaining accuracy. Bookkeeping provides the information from which accounts are prepared. It is a distinct process that occurs within the broader scope of accounting. Each transaction, whether it is a question of purchase or sale, must be recorded. There are usually a set of structures in place for bookkeeping that are called quality controls, which help ensure timely and accurate records. In principle, transactions must be recorded daily into the books or the accounting system. For each transaction, there must be a document that describes the business transaction. This could include a sales invoice, sales receipt, a supplier invoice, a supplier payment, bank payments and journals. And these accompanying documents provide the audit trail for each transaction that are an important part of maintaining accurate records in the event of an audit. We just spoke 
and learned about what traditional accounting is. Now let us understand how and why this accounting is done for mutual funds. As investments in and by mutual funds involve financial transactions, these transactions have to be accounted for as per accounting rules and standards. The valuation of securities within a portfolio have to be as per applicable rules and regulations of those securities. Mutual fund accounting is a critical matter for the financial system given the increasing preference for mutual funds over direct holdings of securities such as stock and bonds by investing public. In particular, many if not most individual investors and retail clients have majority of their savings in mutual funds. Remember around 46% of US household investment is investment in mutual funds. Similarly, lot of corporates and institutions also park their funds in money market mutual funds. I've, I hope this session has helped you in learning mutual fund administration or in general fund administration, fund accounting, understanding the concepts of fund accounting and risk management. Thank you.